Ah yes, naming gun barrels, something that the US military is very renowned for in its legacy of tanks because it's a tradition. Traditions are held pretty strong by tank crews and of course anyone who's in the military knows that traditions are taken quite personally when they get challenged or changed or in some way interrupted. And in 2023 it seems as though the US Army is starting to challenge a tradition which is naming tanks or more specifically letting crew members name their tanks and having the ability to display it on the barrels of the beautiful M1A1 or M1A2 Abrams. Now, of course, uh, I have never had that sort of honor of being able to inscribe my name on my vehicle, so I was in the British Army. I tell a lie. No, we used to put our names on the front right or front left of the vehicles, just on the hull, but the US Army's tradition is to normally place it on the barrel, which you'll see in most of the footage here today. But the 3rd Armored Corps, headquartered in beautiful Fort Hood, Texas, which I've heard a lot of good and bad things about, released a policy early in the year restricting which tank crews can actually name their vehicles. Now to me, and to most of you, I think this is somewhat petty, but other people have disagreed with me actually when I've talked to them recently. They believe it does incentivize getting better scores at gunnery. Now I don't think the US military has a challenge of having good scores on gunnery. Tank crews, I can safely say in the US military, are extremely proficient in what they do, and maybe they're just looking for more perfection of their gunnery tables and qualifications. But now, to actually be able to name your tank and to put that sort of honor to your tank, you've got to get the highest bracket during gunnery and the qualification meant to measure how effective your crew overall is in combat, which it's not a bad thing, but is this really where we want to focus our efforts on? These little trivial things seem to continually pop up in military news nowadays, and I find it quite strange. It's a weird phenomena where we're just picking and nitpicking at the most ridiculous things. I saw an article the other day um, and a, a news press article thing saying about beards in the US military, which is still a massive issue, you know, an ongoing thing. And I, I've never really had the care for a beard, so it doesn't matter to me. I know many people out there do uh, in the US military want to have the ability to have a beard like we do here in Canada, but I couldn't care less personally. Um, if they had said, you're never going to have a beard again, I, I couldn't care less. But that's just the changing times, right? But a lot of people are saying, you know, this change is just not adding value, but it, it does have a specific, you know, requirement why they're doing it. It's not just being... a you know, oh, by the way, we're just taking away all your, your tank naming because we want to. It's actually kind of a good thing. It's going to add maybe some more passion and pride to working in your tank crew, doing better. Um, but the third core compromises the bulk of the U.S. Army's heavy armor formations, the M1A2 Abrams. So there's quite a lot of uh, troops that are going to be affected by this for sure. And one former tanker currently serving the army who spoke to the condition of anomaly, because of course they're not authorized to talk to the media, they said they understand the guidance in the sense that we should really be getting after maintenance, really be dedicated to your platform. So if you truly want to name your tank, you put in all the time and effort to maintaining it. It's such a huge thing for tankers to qualify first time and shoot distinguished and really have a good working tank all the time. So... You know, there is some people out there agreeing with it. He also mentions crews who qualify distinguished on a platform borrowed from a different crew are not authorized to name their platform. Crews who fail to maintain distinguished qualification uh, will remove their vehicle name during range recovery operations. So, yeah, I don't know. I think, uh, you know, maintenance and, and looking after your vehicle isn't really a huge thing that I think should be uh, added to the ability to name your tank. I mean, gunnery, combat scenario, sure, but I guess big part of looking after your vehicle is the maintenance too. Um, but that's the big thing, apparently, that uh, the gunners and, and tank crews alike look forward to after completing a really good challenging uh, gunnery course or qualification is to name it. And it's taking a little bit of that, I don't know, maybe a little bit of jive to being a tanker. I don't know. I don't think it's really that bad. But anything to get the crew to bond, I think, is really, really important. And this is just one thing that doesn't seem to be necessary right now. I think there's a better way to incentivize the crews. Naming of the vehicle should just be standard and find some other way of recognizing exceptional service as a tank crew in the U.S. Army. That's my thoughts. I'd love to hear your opinion on it. Let me know in the comment section below. Uh, if you did enjoy today's video, please leave me a like and hit that subscribe button. Looking forward to uh, hearing your comments, folks. Take care. Bye-bye.